remain standing for the reading of the scripture this morning, where we read from John 7, verses 37 through 39. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. This is the reading from the Scripture. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Now we join in prayer. Holy God, we pray that you pour your Holy Spirit upon us today. That we might truly and deeply become your people. That we might witness to your word by our lives and our proclamation. And Lord, pour it on upon each person here and upon this church that we might better be able to discern your will and your ways and live them out. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this is the last week of our sermon series. It is uh, entitled uh, Catch Fire. Those of you who uh, have been here might remember that this series has been based on the coming of the Holy Spirit to the earliest group of Christians, uh, the earliest believers in Jesus Christ. And you might also remember how we've looked at how the church faithfully and, and fruitfully opened themselves to God's Spirit and let the Spirit live through them for the glory of God's kingdom. That is our prayer for each of us and for this church as a whole, that we faithfully and fruitfully open to the Spirit for the glory of his kingdom. In our main scripture today from John, we don't start out on Pentecost Sunday, though. We start out at a time a couple of years earlier when Jesus and his disciples had gathered during uh, what's called the Feast of Booths. It sounds exciting, doesn't it? The Feast of, of Booths in, uh, in Jerusalem. And, and actually, the, the Feast of Booths is one of several Jewish holidays that were observed during the year. Uh, the Jews, uh, as you might recall, um, you, you might consider them, you know, certainly compared to the button-down Christians that we are today, uh, rather party animals. They had several feasts uh, and celebrations during the year, all of which were aimed at celebrating something that God had done in their lives. And, and the Feast of Booths was honoring and celebrating and, and feasting over uh, one particular thing that each of you have heard about, and that is God's time with them when they were wandering through the desert on the way from Egypt to the Promised Land. Now, that seemingly may not be directly connected to Pentecost and the coming of the Spirit, uh, but indeed, Jesus in these verses we heard refers to the coming. You know, on the night after the Hebrews left Egypt, escaped slavery, if you will, they entered into the desert Sinai. And uh, we know deserts are dry, right? And we pray like we don't become a desert. 
But they, they found themselves in one and they didn't have adequate supplies of water, so it wasn't very long before they uh, ran out of water. And well, they started complaining and grumbling and moaning. And they were angry, you know, they were threatening to return to Egypt. They were wondering why God had delivered them, you know, so that they could die of thirst out there in the desert. So God uh, allowed Moses the power of, of take, taking up his staff, his shepherd's staff, and striking a rock. And, and water came gushing out of the rock. So they all drank. And, and what happened during the Feast of the Booths is there was a particular part of each day where the gushing of that water and God's provision for them was remembered. There was a, a pool in uh, in Jerusalem, called the Pool at Siloam. Now, now actually, it doesn't look like much of a pool, does it? It 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 kind of kind of looks like a river around here. Uh, you know, you can see the stones sticking up. You know, it's probably uh, there's probably an inch or two or three inches of depth. In there, but back in those days, the pool at Siloam actually bubbled up. And it bubbled up through rock. So each day during the Feast of Booths, there was a time when a priest would leave the temple and, and go out to the pool at Siloam and take a pitcher with him and, and fill the pitcher with the water bubbling up out of that rock. You see the tie-in to Moses striking the rock. Right? Yeah. No, I mean, y'all are kind of a reluctant crew today. I feel like I should maybe do a, a tap dance or something like that. So, um, and the priest would then take the water back to the temple and, and, and pour the water over the altar. So one day Jesus and his disciples were standing there watching the priest get the pitcher and, and head over to the temple. And, and, and he said, when the Holy Spirit comes and lives in you, out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. So the, the living water, he said, will come to you when the Holy Spirit comes to you. You know, as a matter of fact, the living water is the Holy Spirit living in you and through you. It, it, it's literally God in you working out of you. Now, now I don't know about you. You might uh, think that it is you who might forgive or show love or mercy or compassion, but but I believe it's not Mel who's able to forgive. It's not Mel who's really able to show compassion or love, you know, or wisdom or courage. But, but it's God working in me. And I believe it's God working in you. You know, in one of the first sermons in this series, we remembered the coming of the Holy Spirit to the disciples on Pentecost. And, and you know, they kind of came that morning to this upper room and kind of like we come today. We don't actually expect much when we come to church. So it strikes me. We're, we're, we're kind of clueless. We're, we're unsuspecting that God might bless us with God's power and God might change us as God's people and send us forth to witness to his love and to his word. So they had gathered in the upper room that day, and it was about 50 days after Jesus had risen from his grave. In that week, uh, in Pentecost week, Jews had gathered for yet another festival in Jerusalem that week. And they had come not only from Jerusalem and Israel, but from all over the Mediterranean basin. You know, the countries that we know today is, is Spain and uh, Italy and Greece and Turkey. 
they had come to Jerusalem uh, to celebrate again. And when the disciples were in the upper room in Jerusalem on that day of Pentecost, it's like God <laughs> struck the rock and the water came gushing out. The Spirit entered into them and the Spirit flowed through them so that they were able to do things afterwards that they were not able to do before. You remember the tongues of fire coming and resting on their heads so that they were able to communicate with others in languages they didn't know? See, tie that with the foreigners coming into Jerusalem that week, and they were now hearing testimony about the word of God from some of whom were fairly ignorant fishermen, no offense to any fishermen out there, from Galilee. You know, they did not take literacy classes around the Galilee back then. And similarly, Peter, you remember Peter, who had denied Christ three times after he was arrested, who had run away and abandoned him in his moment of, of need. Peter stood up in front of many of the same people who had crucified Jesus weeks earlier, began testifying that he was Lord of all. You know, the water, the spirit came flowing out of them. They were changed. They were made new. They transcended who they were before because of the gift of the Spirit. And, you know, uh, and, and, re and remember, in the subsequent weeks, we, we moved on and, and we talked about how the first apostles and the first believers of the church dedicated themselves to the teaching of the Word, uh, to fellowship to the breaking of bread, and to prayers. It's in Acts 2, 42 to 47. Uh, and, and the Bible says that when they did those things and they engaged in those things, you know, they were further open to the Spirit flowing out of them, that awe and acts of awe and wonder were performed. But moreover, new believers came every day. Look around you here. Do you see the new believers among us? There are people out there who can hear the word who are living in Castroville or, or Hondo or someplace in between right now. It's up to us to let the spirit through us. But meanwhile, they not only practice these acts of piety and togetherness, but they also reached out to the community in, in acts of love and sharing and, and, and generosity. You might remember when the first associate pastors to the 12 were named. They were named not as youth directors or as children directors, but they were named to help with the distribution to widows who were in need, the distribution of food. So they joined in acts of, of love and generosity and sharing, and they, they broke through the boundaries that people had erected that had closed them to the words that Jesus had been speaking in Jerusalem just weeks before. Fires were burning within, or if you prefer, God's spirit was pouring out of them, bringing when only God can truly bring in a deep sense of healing and community, and purpose and love, and direction, and forgiveness. You know, you know, this church is such a place where, where many have the, the spirit flowing through them. The water is pouring out of them in those kinds of acts. Uh, you know, the, the spirit will come out of our hearts. You know, even our name speaks of this. Even the history of the church speaks of this. It's in our very DNA as a congregation. You remember how we were founded, how New Fountain came to be? Well, well, first, it took them running low on water, the first settlers who had settled around Vandenberg. There wasn't anybody here at the time. So they ran low out of water, and they were looking for water, as were the ancient Jews at one time. And they found their new water source here, and hence the name New Fountain. 
uh, you know, soon a, a Methodist pastor was called to come out here and they had the first worship service out under the Weemers Oaks a few hundred yards south of here. You know, eight came to Christ that day. Numbers were added daily. You know, and it's through them that we're able to sit in here and worship today. It is in our DNA that God provides. It's in our DNA that a fountain flows. You know, as Jesus said, when the Spirit comes and is within you, then rivers of living water pour out of you. You know, water is the source of life. It's the source of creation. You know, when God first created, he was brooding over the waters. You know, there's a time in our life when belief in us seems dead. But there's also a time when belief comes alive. And, and when we experience this transforming faith, this faith that makes us more than we can be by ourselves, you know, the faith that suddenly moves us in our, our minds and our hearts and our hands and our feet to live out in God's ways and, and not our way. You know, that's the Holy Spirit working within. You know, for those first disciples, that moment came, you know, the day of Pentecost when the wind rushed through and tongues of fire danced over their heads. But for most of us, it's not going to be an instant. Is anybody here a, a stiff-necked sinner like I am? You know, and God has to work on us. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. Adrian and me are... <laughs> We're, we're simpatico on this point. You know, God has to work on us over a lifetime, you know, to lead us to his ways, to open us to, you know, a trickle of water. No offense, Adrian, I'm speaking to myself now, coming out of us. Of course, we can stifle the spirit. We can ignore the spirit. We, we can fight off the better angels in us. You know, we can turn away from God for a day or for a lifetime, but God's still there. The Spirit is still within. Uh, I think we have a choice to let it flow out, out of us. You know, we open to it in the same way those first disciples did. Through teaching the Word, learning the Word, fellowship, breaking of bread, in prayers. Whether the Spirit cracks us open in a mighty movement or moves in us over time, we're, we're, we're blessed with it only because of God's grace and love. Jesus cried out that day, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Let the one who believes in me drink. And rivers of living water will come pouring out of your heart. Because God makes it so through the gift of God's self in each of you. Do you feel the Spirit? Are you open to the Spirit? How might God be working through you? How might God be seeking to work through you? How might you share a gift with the world just like Elora shared her gift of song this morning? That's our call in this. A new life, a new birth, all in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and plant in us a desire to serve and grow, to listen for your spirit where you might be guiding us to go. Breathe fire into us this day and move us from complacency to action. Come and stir us that we might better serve you. That we too, as our Lord, might comfort those who mourn, heal those who are ill, bring life to death, bring light out of darkness. We pray these things in the name of our Savior. Amen.